Hi fiends, thanks for joining me on Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. You may or you may not know, and you probably don't, that the reason my show is called The Coffee House of Horror is that what feels like a million years ago, I was working as a handler at the Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon table with Mr. Nathan Basil. And before I did an interview with him, I brought him a coffee. And the next day I did one with Felissa Rose and I brought her a coffee and did one with David Howard Thornton and brought him a coffee. And then COVID happened. So it seemed very natural to me when I started interviewing people that I call it the Coffee House of Horror. And with me tonight is the man that helped me to find the name for my show and so many other things. You probably know him as Leslie Vernon, or you might know him as a teacher. But I'm going to be joined by Mr. Nathan Basil. How do? Hi. Look at us. We're doing this thing. We are doing this thing. I know. It was so much more fun when we had the good fortune to do it in person, but yeah. then COVID happened in the world. Yeah, changed. those were the days. That's right. <laughs> Pre COVID. But yeah, but now we can do this outside of having to meet up at a convention, you know? Yeah, although I keep, uh, I still keep pushing the people that I know they need to bring you out from su sunny California and uh, from my seclusion. To, they need to rescue me seclusion. from my, my cave. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good thing. I like my cave. My cave is nice and cozy. I don't want to leave. Don't make me leave. Well, we could start bringing people to your cave, but that would probably be unseemly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'd have there'd be waivers and all kinds of things that would get really complicated. Exactly. Now, I'm kind of uh, curious about asking you because I just plain don't know, and I'm wondering if some of the other people out there don't know. So you've been an acting teacher. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so I, I, how did you going from uh, working on one uh, side of the camera with acting, how did you end up getting into teaching? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, Why did I expect uh, any different than that? <laughs> well, I, 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 I got a lot of training. I mean, I did a lot of training for, for my, you know, pre preparing myself for a professional career. And I got a lot of experience in my career and um, just over time, um, you know, people would ask for coaching on an audition or, <clears throat> uh, you know, coaching for, a, a, you know, they, they wanted to, you know, try to get into a grad school or something like that. And I, <clears throat> so I, I would work with people in different capacities. And then I um, started looking around at um, local colleges, my old um, community college. I started teaching there a little bit. So I just kind of dabbled around a little bit. Um, and I, I guess I did enough institutional teaching to realize that that wasn't what I wanted to do. I didn't want to, I, I really didn't have an interest in teaching somebody else's system or techniques. I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to figure out what I thought and what I believed and what worked for me. And, um, and so that's what I've been refining over the last, uh, I guess six years, um, what what it is that I have to say, and and uh, and it's been pretty cool seeing seeing the results. I've heard you snippets here and there talk about breakthrough act acting. Yeah. Um, what does that mean exactly? Uh, it means a lot of different things. Um, the one. Um, I developed the techniques and the the philosophy, I guess you'd call it, um, out of breakthroughs that I had had in my acting, things that I could look back on and go, without a doubt, oh yeah, that was a turning point right there. Uh, that was a massive perspective shift, or that was a, uh, a massive um, 
transformation that happened as a result of of the uh, process that I was going through at the time. Um, you know, so so that's what the the kind of skeleton of the work is like, but um, it's also breakthrough in the sense that where we're starting from is is asking students to to declare, you know, what what it is that you're looking to do when you're acting. What it is that what are you looking to have a breakthrough in? You know, um, I I I'd say uh, again and again and again, it's not called good enough acting. You know, it's not called this will do for now acting. It's called breakthrough acting. And the reason why people put their butts in seats is because of that word. And it means different things for people. Different people have different definitions for it. But ultimately, it's an aspiration. You know, it's a uh, it's a declaration. This is what I'm looking to do. And when you're starting from that point, um, you can't help but uh, really set up the work as uh, transformational, or at least having a possibility of that. Um, but then um, uh, it's it's also um, called breakthrough acting in the sense that there's there's a couple of different kinds of breakthroughs that are possible. There's an intellectual breakthrough, um, which I feel like we deliver um, every class in the in the kind of conversation that we have. Um, but it's also uh, experientially uh, a breakthrough um, structure because um, it's one that um, pushes people with real um, careful encouragement um, to to step through um, into areas where they're not um, comfortable, where they're not familiar, where they're not um, um, they don't feel where it feels a little little dangerous, um, and so it's maybe to be avoided, uh, but we can provide a space where people um, just really get courageous and we can strengthen that muscularity too. So, yeah. That actually sounds uh, as though finding yourself in your acting, uh, it sounds like it's also very personally therapeutic because you'd have to be confronting your own uh, <laughs> right. demons to, to be able to deal with them that way. Well, I mean, if you think about it, shouldn't that be just a given with acting? But no, that's not. No. <laughs> <laughs> acting is about pretending I'm somebody else. It's not about exploring myself or my expression or what I have to say. You know, it's it's uh, you know, it's me trying to ignore that I'm me for a little while. What what the fuck is that? Come on. <laughs> you know, who wants to step into the towards the fearful you know we we all we all do go to great lengths to avoid change so um yeah yeah it's not it's it's not i don't take it for granted when people actually put themselves in the position to um when they put their their care in my hands you know i, I it's 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 meaningful to me I had read somewhere that somebody said that they had signed up for, is it a four week course? Mm -hmm. and yeah, we do. We do four. Get in touch. Sorry? How can people find out about that, where it is? Get in touch about it. Um, well, we're, we're getting the kinks worked out on our new website. So I don't have that information for you right now, unfortunately, but uh, we, um, we post on on Instagram. I, my, the information can be can be found on Instagram whenever we have a new class. I've been making that information available on there, and um, and yeah. So as soon as we have dates for um, 2023, uh, we're the the uh, scene study that we're doing right now is going to run through the second week of November, and then we'll take a hiatus through the rest of the holidays. Um, but in 2022, I mean, sorry, 2023, we'll, we'll start back up again with new dates for new courses. Could you give us an example of one of the, uh, what one of the classes would be like? Yeah. So we do a theme yeah. for each of the, uh, classes. I, I try not to talk a whole lot. I mean, I can talk if you let me go, I'll just buy my, so I, I try to just keep my comments nice and brief and, and, but you know, 
present a theme through which uh, the the lens through which we're going to view the work for that for that class. Um, and then people get get up and work, and uh, they work on uh, monologues or they work on scenes. We we've um, we've been working on songs. Uh, but uh, people bring in whatever it is that they're working on. Um, uh, some of our um, students are writers and they want to um, work out material that they're um, trying to develop. Um, so they bring it in and, um, and then we get to work. And generally it's uh, you know, working through once with whatever it is that a student's prepared. And then, um, and then we start, um, we start, our conversation. And I have a unique conversation with each of the students because they are completely unique individuals and what they're bringing is completely unique. And so our conversation must be unique uh, uh, necessarily. And, uh, and it, my end of the conversation is um, listening to where they're at and uh, also having a sense of where they need to go. And, and I can have some clarity about that um, uh, mainly because um, they've already told me what their what breakthroughs they're looking for in their work, and so I can customize what it is that they're looking to do in their work uh, with what's uh, with what's showing up, and uh, and I can point out things, and I can bring their attention to things that um, might not be on the radar, but that uh, could be helping them even more in getting in the direction that they're looking to go. Um, it's, uh, I feel like what we're doing is kind of unclassifiable because it's uh, um, very much about the exchange that's happening right then and there. Um, but generally a student <laughs> is um, working with me for um, 15, 20 minutes. And by the end of that process, um, the work that they're doing is radically different from the work that they started out doing. And uh, most of the time it's, it's a, it's just a process of letting go of um, ideas of what it needs to look like and expectations of how things need to go in order to get there. And, um, and it becomes um, exploring all of the stimuli that's outside of one's head and all of the kind of, head noise that goes on. So taming the head noise. Yeah, you know, we, we all bring our own thing into it. You know, we all bring our, uh, our specific brand of distraction. And um, mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's self-consciousness, there's self-censorship, there's self-criticism, they're all the selves, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, uh, that's going to happen. It's there's there's no way to prevent it from happening. But what we can do is we can train ourselves to um, recognize it um, when it's coming around the corner, and um, to redirect ourselves so that it's not getting all the attention. That boogeyman isn't getting the attention. We can focus our attention on things that have far more value. And that's always going to be the people that we're talking to, um, the people that we're talking with, um, the, the it, things around us in our environment that are impacting us, all the stimuli that are outside of us, outside of our head. Um, so that's kind of my um, expertise, I guess you'd call it, is just pointing out all the stuff that we can pay attention to in, instead of this, you know. Mm -hmm. That gets in the way. Yeah. Okay, well, do you have anything else you would like to share about your teaching or your class? And no. uh, if you do, please feel free. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I, as soon as we have the, uh, the website um, locked down, then I'll get that information to you if you can, you know, post that maybe after the fact. But um, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I love doing it. I'm grateful that um, that that people hand themselves uh, over to me uh, it's, I and uh, it's it's doing well and getting results and I'm thrilled with uh, the possibilities for next year. 
of course I can't help but say, wow, a class taught by Leslie Vernon. How fun would that be? Or scary. <laughs> so. <laughs> somebody, somebody in last week's class com complained that they always get, you know, cast and as, you know, as scary people and intimidators and, you know, threateners and, you know, those kinds of roles. And I'm like, dude, I can't, I never, I never got a job where I wasn't a serial killer. I mean, it's just, it never, I never got a good guy role. That's all, you know, people look at me and they see, you know, serial killer. So I, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. It's the intensity in the eyes. That's sure. the dead and the fact that you only have pets you can eat. That's, there's that, you know, but. I haven't eaten you yet, have I? <laughs> A cat. Well, you can't you you can't eat the cats. That's just the rule. You can eat all the other pets. Wow. So. <laughs> well, you're safe for now. So the last time that we spoke, mm -hmm. which has been a couple of years now and seems like even longer ago than that, because COVID did weird things to time. Um, it did. But we had a Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, wonderful and awesome cast reunion. And uh, Kane Hodder had sat in on that, which was so fun to have him uh, surprise you guys. And there was some conversation during that, and you and I actually continued it a bit after that, about a side project by about behind the mask have you thought anything along that line uh attempting to pursue anything uh, no i i um covid yeah it did weird things with timelines and um and i found that it was a good warp that started happening um i i realized the more kind of distance i got from my old self um i realized how much focused on the now and the and the and the the, the steps to, to to be done here now you know and mm -hmm. and um, just really focusing obsessing on on you know, the, the next steps ahead. And, um, and I, I think I've been learning how to get cool with raising my view and seeing more of the, taking in more of the horizon, um, you know, a longer view. And, um, and that's been serving me, I think. So, um, you know, there was a lot of slowdown that necessitated it, but um, mm -hmm. a lot of it worked. This isn't your show, dude. Hey. Um, that was really good for me and uh, has, really instructive for me. So mm -hmm. I've been trying to hang on to that as much as I can um, to, I don't know, keep from getting too carried away with stuff. And, uh, and so that kind of looks like, you know, having a lot of quiet nights with this gal and, um, and sitting in front of the window and listening to music and thinking thoughts. <laughs> uh, yeah, which uh, sounds pretty boring, but it's pretty awesome. It actually sounds pretty awesome to me. So uh, my life can be a little bit busy and demanding and this and that and the other thing. So actually I, I try to put aside some time for that. I love your kitty. <laughs> I, I have three myself, but I also care for a feral cat colony that's in my yard. Oh and my goodness. Uh, yeah, the, the mom is all black and uh, the siblings were all gray. And one of the litters were all black. So they were black and gray. So they're called the black and blue colony. <laughs> So, so I love the kitties. That's a lot of work. 
You know, it's really, sometimes I think love is work, but I, uh, but I don't think you about, you're thinking about it as work when you're doing it. Right. You know, and most of those kitties actually all but three of the kittens that were born into the colony were young enough and or friendly enough that they are now in homes with families, including Dave and Jennifer's, my editor and his lovely wife's son has one of them. So there we're talking about kitties. <laughs> you knew it was gonna come around to that, didn't you? I couldn't help but talking about kitties. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> Do you have any uh, thoughts, plans, if somebody approached you and said, would you come out to a convention? Uh, would, would we be able to talk you into doing it? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm open, but then I, I always, pretty much all, every time a promoter approaches me, I say, you do realize that nobody knows behind the mask. Nobody ever watched that movie. <laughs> But those I, don't, do I, don't, I don't know how much of a draw that's going to be for you. I don't know if that's going to, you know, turn into ticket sales for you. But I guarantee <laughs> you, I guarantee you the people who walk up to my table are going to be super, super stoked. You know, that was actually um, the, the interview I did with you was the first one I'd ever done. And I hadn't planned it out. But after I was hearing all the people talking to you all weekend, Everybody who came up to the table loved Behind the Mask. And so many people said the same thing. How did I not know about this before? How did I just learn about this? And I've turned a lot of people on to it because it's one of my favorite films. And I have people say the same thing. How did I not know about this? And everybody feels that same way. <laughs> so. And that, and isn't, it, uh, isn't it great when you have something in your back pocket that you know you can you can play that card you know if somebody's looking for something to you know chill out to on a saturday night and uh you know have a little fun with friends or whatever it is um you you have this thing i know this thing that's gonna make you happy and yep. uh you don't know anything about it and because you don't know anything about it um get get ready to get blindsided by fun and the people who are familiar with the horror genre will be floored by the cast. Oh, yeah. The people oh, yeah. who don't know anything about horror, it's a great introduction because it has horror, it has comedy, it has you and Angela. What else could you use? And Ben, <laughs> what else do you need? <laughs> oh, a good script. That helps. Well, that did help. And that was a very, very good script. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was great. But, but really, you all uh, just unbelievably, <laughs> the, it, it's such an appealing, fun story. And even the parts that are scary are fun because of how it's all played out. So uh, I could see that you saying nobody knows it, but at a horror convention where people who do know it, I've had a no, number I, of people say to me they they would love to meet you. So, but then again, I, I I'm I joking. I, it, whenever I go to a convention, it's always just <laughs> it's I it's I was embraced so you know quickly and warmly by the horror community. Um, I'm always blown away by the, the the number of people and the enthusiasm of the people that come up to me at conventions and. Um, and it's all always, um, yeah. It's it's just always an impressive weekend. So um, yeah, no, I love doing conventions. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing more conventions. Um, I don't have any slated right now, um, but um, yeah, I'll we'll get around to it. Well, Nathan, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time and sharing all of the uh these wonderful things with us the teaching and a little bit of reminiscing about uh leslie vernon and i myself look forward to seeing you when you're in here because i don't see myself as getting out to your corner of the world of your rear cave is anytime real soon so 
Yeah. You got to get back to like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, that area. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll see about booking something in there. In, 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 there All there, right. Thereabouts. It, to, to, to accommodate your, your. To, just to accommodate me bringing yeah. coffee. So. Yeah. Um, just let me know what your schedule is and I'll try to book a, you know. <laughs> I'll shoot you a text. Yeah. Good. Okay. So you budding actors out there are people who want to get a, a little bit better, a little bit sharper. Yeah. I, I love working with people uh, who have tons of experience. I also love people who, who, have zero experience. Um, you know, I feel like acting uh, could and should be um, used for its what it can do, which is just really allow somebody to locate and exercise their voice and um, and their range of expression. Um, I feel like acting um, for some crazy reason rarely does uh, offer that for folks. Um, but that's that's the way we work. That's what our work is all about. And um, and I love taking people from um, where they're at on day one to where they're at and at the end of week four, and uh, asking them, "Did you have breakthroughs?" And every single one of them to a person is like, "What are you kidding?" <laughs> every yes, every class, my brain is melting. Help me. <laughs> so you melt people's brains. I explode them or I melt them. That's all right. Yeah. Or I just get in there and I massage and I massage brains. That sounds even better. Really weird. <laughs> Check out Mr. Nason Faithful and his breakthrough acting. He will massage your brain. <laughs> that's my new that's my new I can see the t-shirts now and I will get one even though I'm not an actor I was yeah. actually asked by a couple of friends who are filmmakers if I wanted to be you know background in a zombie or in a crowd or something and I just can't see I, I, I could not not smile you know, I'm so impressed when people can be someone else because I can't, I, I can't even put on a Halloween costume because I'll start laughing, you know, <laughs> it, it impresses me so much. It's such a skill. So, uh, well, I, tr I like, I uh, remind people all the time. It's, it's the easiest thing in the world, but it's the hardest thing in the world. It's the easiest thing in the world because we, we, everybody knows how to play or it's just, you know, we used to do it on playgrounds. It's just, you know, in the time since then we've, we've learned to not give ourselves the same kind of permission to do that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's really what the work is about more and more. It's just exercising the muscularity of our permission. Okay. On that note, any of you guys who want to get in touch with Nathan, we'll have the information when I get it. And we'll let you know when he gets to any of these conventions. When it works with your schedule. When it works with my schedule. Thank you so much, Nathan. You're welcome. It was great to see you. It was great to see you too. See ya. <laughs>